When I first walked into the molecular genetics lab at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, I was amazed with all the new DNA equipment that was there. There were centrifuges, pipettes, hot plates, walk-in freezers, and more. It was so cool to get my own set of tools. I even got to choose what color tape to label all my stuff with, so I chose yellow. It was the color of my car. I worked with Drosophila melangaster, extracting DNA, fruit flies. Our lab worked on the muscle mice and heavy chain gene, and specifically, my job was to find a mutation in the gene that caused a deformity in the wing formation, therefore impeding flight. From the proteins and after many chemical experiments and um, radioactive material, the DNA would be isolated. I actually isolated it. I would sit with the x-ray film on a light box, reading the DNA sequence, the order of it, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. The process of isolating the DNA took about four hours, and isolating, sequencing the gene actually took about five days of rinse and repeat, which meant if anything went wrong in any steps of the experiment, had to start from scratch. Starting over seemed so easy then, it was just what we did. But when you start over midway through life, much more complicated than studying DNA. When I turned 53, I decided to step out of isolation. I realized being a molecular geneticist was a breeze compared to what I was about to face. I was a master at isolating, and that wasn't limited to genes. In college, my plan was to go to med school, which meant all I had time for was studying, no socializing. <laughs> when that fell through, I got a job in the lab, stayed isolated, and worked towards my graduate degree. Isolation became part of my DNA and gradually continued for the next 25 years. Externally, the facade was fine. I was the scientist, wife, mother of three, wearing multiple hats, doing multiple duties. The pillar of the upscale suburbia mom, busy doing it all. Internally, I was isolated due to my fear of being seen, hiding and lonely. Loneliness is the next biggest public health crisis to face Americans since the rise of substance abuse and obesity. And the physical impact of loneliness and social isolation is as real as any other physical detriment to the human body, such as thirst, hunger, or pain. Dr. John Casapo, a neuroscience professor who studies the epigenetics of loneliness, actually has found that the emotional and physical impact trigger cellular changes that alter gene expression and increase stress and aging in our bodies. This is proof that loneliness is affecting our health. Through our daily use of email and texting and smartphones and professional and social media, we live in an age of instant global connectivity. We are more connected today to one another more than ever before in human history. Yet somehow, we're increasingly feeling more alone. Isolation can occur in the most crowded, populated areas. Take the center of Times Square or the middle of Central Park. As many people that are there, it's so easy to stay alone. It certainly was for me. I was so afraid to be seen and heard and show my true self that I stayed isolated. Just like the genetic mutation of the fruit fly I discovered, I impeded my own flight. I'm a scientist, and I like formulas. So what I have deduced is this. Hiding plus fear plus loneliness equals isolation. Hiding starts by not speaking your truth and staying silent. And the more you stay silent, the more intense fear the second part of the equation becomes. US News and World Report states that three out of four Americans are affected by loneliness. And it spikes in your late 20s, mid 50s, and late 80s. And in a study by Rune and Wu in 2008, it was found that social isolation actually decreased the lifespan of my beloved fruit fly. Through my own evolution as a child, through college, onto being a wife and mother, the I should be and let everyone else fill in that blank for me was isolating. And that fear led to isolation. Fear is a physiological and scientifically proven response we all share. We all fear rejection and being judged, which is why we hide. The negatives of these fears are patterns and perceptions that we've created, which at some point may have served us, but now they're not. We have the ability to reprogram and rewire our brains through neuroplasticity. 
all patterns created through neuroplasticity become habits, which mean your bad patterns are the ones that become your bad habits. Neuroplasticity is defined as the ability of the brain to actually change its physical structure and function based on input from your behaviors and emotions and experiences and thoughts. Changing your behavior means changing your brain. This is not based on hope, this is total science. You can scientifically overcome fear and in return reduce loneliness and isolation. When I was in the lab, sequencing DNA was a big deal. It was time consuming. There was a lot of room for error, both experimental and human. If the DNA gel ran correctly, and I was able to get a DNA sequence, and the gel was able to be dried and lifted without any damage, I had a DNA sequence to be read, a sequence of dots. Same thing happens in life. Life is a sequence of dots that connect. Sometimes we don't know how those dots connect until we have an epiphany of some sort. I hid until I was the exact age my mom died, and my daughter turned the age that I was when it happened. I realized I had to come out of isolation and not let another day go by, especially for my daughter's sake. By making this active conscious choice, I was able to show up my true self, better, stronger, with much more clarity and ability to make a greater impact on society. And that was a sequence I was totally conscious of making. You can reduce or even eliminate the loneliness and isolation that are your patterns. And you don't have to be a molecular geneticist to create your new sequence in life. We can all connect the dots starting today by simply trusting in who we are in the world, looking around this room and seeing one another. You are enough. And that I don't have to prove. Thank you.